This is how the ranch started out. And this is what it looks like now. I like it. We're going through the reveals room by room. Should we talk about the bathroom? When you think about renovating a bathroom, do you suddenly feel fear and panic about how you could possibly choose from all the thousands of choices out there? You're not alone. I'm here to tell you that yes, there are thousands of choices when it comes to tile and countertops and plumbing fixtures, but that doesn't mean it needs to be impossible for you. You just need to think about how you want your bathroom to feel. And I can promise you that if you start by making one choice, it will lead to a path where you are looking to curate a finished statement that all goes cohesively together. So the first step I always think about is, are we creating a contemporary bathroom or a traditional bathroom? Correct, in this house, it was all about contemporary style. At which point you can just put your blinders on and never look at a single thing that is traditional. Ooh. Well, you just took at least 50% of the choices out of the market for you. Next, think about how you want it to feel. Is it a space that is light or is it a space that you want to be dark and dramatic? Okay, well, it's a bathroom. So for me, that means you probably have it figured out that I want the overall feeling of the bathroom to be light. But you know what I'm always also looking for is a space that feels connected, connected to where it is in this case, this house is in the countryside and also I like it to feel connected to the views outside. So in this case, this bathroom looks onto the backyard, which has a fantastic view out to the woods beyond. So for me, from the get go, I knew I needed to bring in a little, an accent of green and you know, introducing an accent of green is never really a challenge for me. Cause as you know, I love green, totally love green in all shades, in all tones, in all variants. But also I think about green as being a neutral and especially if I'm not talking lime green, I'm not talking about the color that used to be in that bedroom next door. How do I look against the green? Green, hey? That is not the kind of green I'm. Oh, I don't know why the light went off. Oh, can you just plug it in there? Plug it in where? This is not the way I was gonna showcase the green. Let me try that again. I think of green as being a neutral. It's sort of a soft, pistachio green. It's called Verde Aquamarina. If you think about softened green tones, they are so adaptable. Put it with cream, put it with gray, put it with neutral oatmeal, flax, linen tones. It's a really workable hue that can go with so many others. Works well with others, gets along well with others. And when I thought about how I wanted to approach this bathroom, just like the bedroom, I wanted to do something I hadn't done before. How about polka dot wallpaper? Big, gold, bold polka dot wallpaper. You're right, I've never done that before. So you know what I did for this bathroom? I found slabs of pistachio green marble that were $5 a square foot. Try and start with what is affordable? What could I open my eyes to that is fresh and new and different? And when I found these slabs, yeah, yeah, you're good there. they have these incredible striations in them, soft veins of white and soft gray. And interestingly, right around the corner from here, there is a conservation area and you can hike in caves, you can see lookouts. And when I think of that area, which is directly adjacent to this property. Stomach growl. Yeah, that was a really good one. When I think of the conservation area that is directly adjacent to this property, what I think about is these caves. And I think about the beauty of that. And so the variations and the striations in this marble just to me felt like they echoed the caves. So I wanted to install them in the bathroom. That's a strange way of explaining what my inspiration was. But some of you ask me, some of you write me and say, Sarah, where do you get your inspiration? from so many different places, but I wanted to capture the idea of the landscape that surrounds us here. So I bought, how many 
many slabs of marble did I actually buy? I think I only bought two slabs of marble. I spent less than $500 on the marble that created both the shower stall and the vanity in this bathroom. Is that amazing? Yes, that is amazing. Then we book matched the slabs of marble because they had been cut book matched. And what book matched means is that it's as though you open a book and the pattern runs in a perfect repeat. So what you notice is that the veining all kind of cascades down, almost like a waterfall to meet in the corner. And this allows you just to celebrate the beauty of the natural stone in this shower stall. One thing, stomach, one thing that's important, <laughs> listen, it's been a long week. It's been a busy day. I'm hungry. It's lunchtime. And when I finish telling you all about this amazing bathroom, I can have some lunch. It's a reward challenge. Okay. So one of the elements that I tried to be mindful of in this renovation, in every single room, was making the best use of all the available components. So we did not move the placement of the toilet. We did not move the placement of the drain in the shower. We left the toilet in the shower exactly where they were. Well, the easiest thing would just keep the everything else where it is and just make a double vanity here. What we did do was we enlarged the overall space here. We stole a little bit of space from what used to be the walk-in closet, and that was the game changer. Plus, we shifted this door a little bit, and what it did was it gave more space for the shower and the toilet. It also gave better circulation space in the bedroom, and it afforded us the opportunity to put in a vanity that is over six feet wide. I mean, isn't that dreamy? If you're sharing space, what you'll notice is I only put one sink in here, and I did that for good reason. I think that six feet with two sinks can feel a little bit cramped. So I decided I would prefer to have a single sink with ample counter space and tons of storage and really be able to appreciate the beauty of the marble. Do you remember when we opened up the tiles and the tiles were the wrong color? Is that the green tile there? Yeah. I just want to make sure the color looks good. Uh, green tile or gray tile? Green. That's the wrong tile. Oh. I believe in serendipity in design. And somebody, somebody somewhere decided that me putting green tiles on the backsplash was not the right idea. I'm thinking we go with the pale green as the backsplash tile above the vanity. So instead, I got pale gray tiles. And now that they're installed, I'm so happy. I think these are the right choice. Sometimes when you're working with a color, you need to know when enough is enough. And we have lots of our pistachio green in our shower. We have a detail of pistachio green that goes around the window in terms of things I've never done before. I've never trimmed a window in marble, but I looked at this window which butts right into the shower and I thought, why not just get a few little pieces cut and install them to further reinforce this beautiful piece of natural stone that we're using. And then, finishing touch, use it on the vanity. When you're thinking about your vanity counter and you want to make a contemporary statement, I'd encourage you to consider whether you maybe want to go beyond the standard thickness of your countertop. That's so nice, just with that extra thick edge on it. If you're working with either quartz or with natural stone, the thickness of the actual material will be three quarters of an inch. And the standard buildup that your fabricator would use to create your countertop would generally be an inch and a half. That means they take a little extra piece, you have three quarters of an inch, you take an extra three quarters of an inch, and then you end up with an inch and a half. In this case, I decided I wanted something chunkier. I wanted... Holy moly, you want lunch, lady. That's what you want. Oh, I do. Geez. I do want lunch. Uh, evil monster in there demanding food. <laughs> Maybe I should have had two pieces of peanut butter toast this morning. Um, we were out of bananas. So instead of the three quarter inch material that you start with or the one and a half inch buildup, I decided to go two and a half inches for the facing edge of this countertop, just with a crisp profile. And what's amazing about the backsplash now is the veining that is in this counter exactly matches the color of the gray tiles. They're shiny and shimmery. They capture the light coming in through the window and they're just a lovely backdrop. So thank you to whoever decided that I should get gray tile instead of green.
it all works out for the best. And that is something that I think about in every renovation I do. Maybe it's because lots of the projects I do are in remote locations. You've seen me renovate it on an island. You've seen me renovate off the grid. You've seen me renovate here, there, and everywhere. And zipping back to the store to exchange materials isn't always possible. So I try to always make the most of what I've got and accept the challenges. So here, what looked like it could be a challenge didn't turn out to be so. The great thing about the way this vanity sits within the bathroom is that we got over six feet of counter space, but also six feet of counter space translates to six feet of storage space. How amazing is that? One of the features I like best about this vanity is that it has terrific storage drawers that have compartments that you can adjust so you can store anything and everything. I honestly can't imagine how you could have more to store than the space available in this vanity. It truly is terrific storage if you get drawers instead of doors. There is no bending down to open up the cabinets and dig in the back of them. Instead, you just pull that drawer open and you can easily find whatever it is you're looking for. I decided to go with polished nickel as the finish in this bathroom. So we have one of my all time favorite plumbing collections here in terms of the faucets we've used. Polished nickel, this is the Genesis faucet from Ruben A really simple lines. You may recall last year I sprayed this faucet in black and white for the bathroom in Sarah Off The Grid season two, but this is what it looks like in shiny polished nickel. To finish it off, I've added polished nickel wall sconces. So we have polished nickel plumbing fixtures. We have polished nickel hardware on our shower enclosure. We have polished nickel light fixtures, and yes, you guessed it, the finishing touch is some little hexagonal polished nickel knobs on the vanity. And it's these little details of making sure that it all goes together that will end up taking your project to that next level and making sure that when you walk in, you think, ooh, that's good, I love that. What else can I tell you about here? We talked about the, oh, because our green marble is obviously the star of the show in this bathroom, I opted to keep the rest of our tile surfaces super quiet and hushed. So the vanity is white, the walls are a slightly off-white tone, the exact same color as the trim, and the main floor tile and the shower tile are just a pale cream. No pattern, just a little hint of texture. We've got a hexagonal tile on the floor, and then in the shower, I opted for the pebble. If you've never showered on a pebble tile floor, take my word for it, it feels great. At the cottage, we have a true river rock pebble that has a raised surface, and it's almost like getting a little foot massage. And in the guest bathroom at Sarah Off The Grid at Starlight Farm, we put in a black pebble in our shower floor. And everybody loves this. So I thought, here we are. We're in the country. We're in a more rustic location. We have to have something that speaks to where we're at. So that is why I put the pebble on the floor. So that's it. What more can I tell you about this bathroom? This is pistachio green. It's touches of creamy white. It's intended to make you feel invigorated and refreshed, yet to help you appreciate the setting within the natural surroundings. That, my friends, is the principal bedroom and the ensuite bathroom. If you wanna see more content, make sure you click that button hit that red button and subscribe so you never miss an episode because I wanna take you on the rest of the journey of our Retro Ranch Reno. We have the whole lower level to explore. Coming right up.